Today's my presentation is on uh, Azeri manufacturing, uh, and uh, I'd like to share some of my experiences uh, and uh, the knowledge on Azeri manufacturing, what I have you know, collected, and uh, I'd like to thank the authors who has contributed for this particular Azeri manufacturing. The uh, contents of uh, this part, my presentation will go on something like this, uh, the introduction and uh, what exactly we mean by Azeri manufacturing, and why we need Azeri, and uh, what are the key elements of uh, agility and uh, flexibility, and the concept of uh, agility, and finally the Azeri principles. And lastly, I'll uh, take the things into an industrial uh, scenario where how exactly this agile manufacturing is being related to industries and what kind of industries already been, uh, you know, uh, implementing this agile manufacturing for the past uh, one decade or so. And uh, we'll also have an, uh, uh, you know, an uh, feedback uh, queries of uh, what exactly this agile, uh, how this agile manufacturing is having its own impact on uh, Indian industries. And uh, to have start with the introduction, um, before we start what exactly this agile and everything is, uh, uh, this uh, actually the changes in uh, business environment has, uh, you know, got uh, um, in leading, uh, playing in leading role for uh, in new production uh, arena where it has shifted uh, the entire uh, production to an agile manufacturing, the concept of uh, this particular agile manufacturing. What it is, is uh, it has moved this traditional manufacturing, uh, the traditional mass production into the agile uh, manufacturing area. How exactly this uh, paradigm shift has been done is, uh, it is something like in a good olden practice we use it to have an uh, initial we use it to have a job that everyone knows then after that in batch production and later on uh, when we have furthermore shifted it was uh, being uh, done as a uh, mass production area then the people have shifted uh, everything into an absolute mass production area where um, the journey has started from you know uh, having an uh, um, good performance in achieving the targets uh, with an uh, you know a uh, constant effort and uh, the ever ending uh, uh, journey where the people will be continuously transforming the manufacturing industry is continuously transforming from one particular area to another area whereas uh, there is a larger shift of this particular large mass production has been you know uh, taken in uh, 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 larger decades to decades uh, the centuries together the period of uh, you know, in, uh, uh, addressing uh, the concepts here and uh, it has uh, uh, taken larger area larger extent of the time if we talk about uh, what exactly the process cycle is that I will deal a little bit later when we enter into the um, another uh, uh, slides what exactly it is and how exactly we are going to deal but uh, this has uh, been uh, this agile has been shifted this particular uh, uh, traditional mass production paradigm to this uh, agile manufacturing paradigm what this agile manufacturing good olden days we used to have an uh, um, scale ruled uh, manufacturing area where what this scale ruled manufacturing area is we produce uh, lot we produce the mass production in terms of uh, you know the production will be in terms of tons and the same uh, the we have we, we uh, conceptualized the things as such uh, if you are keeping the mission ideal for this much amount of period we try to identify some of the bottlenecks what is the you know ideal uh, time for that and how exactly the material is going to reach within time then we started you know uh, on, uh, on processes of uh, handling the materials and how best the materials will be transferred then after that uh, slowly we have moved further more and uh, so that there won't be any kind of a bottleneck that is available in the industry and uh, thereby it will be you know continuously uh, the plant will be continuously useful and the plant is uh, started you know running in terms of shifts to meet the mass production and the demand of uh, the present day uh, market so that uh, we don't uh, have any kind of an, uh, uh, lean periods of that particular plant so that way we can have an uh, increased productivity and thereby the um, industries can able to cope up with the whatever the revenue that is has been uh, required this is the sale of manufacturing what we are being done 
in case of uh, inflexible plants, inflexible, where immediately we'll be using this uh, um, material and we'll be um, generating. But uh, the flexible plants is something like uh, the all these things has to be uh, reconfigured. Why? Because yes, it it uh, stores lot of uh, material because as uh, Professor uh, Dr. Venkatan Rangaru has said, uh, earlier Professor has uh, discussed something about JIT, so I'm not um, more emphasizing on JIT and I like to simply touch that particular concept. Where uh, these inflexible plants are going to, um, you know, use a larger amount of uh, um, bulged raw material storage. When we enter into the, this uh, flexible plants here, we start, you know, cut shorting of uh, this uh, swollen raw materials and uh, work in progress and future products inventory. All those things will be cut shorted. For this, uh, we say that we have got an you know, elimination of excess inventory in this type of uh, flexible. When we talk about, you know, um, introducing the flexibility into the plants, thereby leading, uh, shortening the lead times and also requirement of whatever the flexible flow lines is. Uh, the flow lines plays a major role here. How exactly the material is flowing? What is the process uh, uh, layout that has been, you know, used by that particular industry, which is actually going to affect this uh, whether the industry can we cannot have an as it's not that much simple to have an flexibility in the industry simply because uh, the day by day the requirements are changing you can have, because all these process layouts has to be it should act flexible as and when there is a requirement and there is a uh, drastic change in the um, product design what we are doing in that particular area with this introduction moving further this is the development in manufacturing technology with respect to 21st century alone. I'm not going much back into that when we started how exactly the ancient ages of manufacturing because we need to talk about this uh, latest uh, concept of uh, agile. I'm not going much in depth. Whereas I have started something on uh, the baseline of this particular uh, development in manufacturing technology is what is something but call as you know the mass production. The mass production which we are we have been familiar with that type, particular type of mass production from uh, good olden days of you know a inflexible plants inflexible plants where you don't have but the production will be in terms of mass production it's not either job or uh, this thing where this mass production will be running on the production line and on Further, we started, you know, developing certain amount of automation under the production line in case of mass production. Slowly, we have shifted our paradigm from mass production to we have introduced the concept of uh, group technology and uh, CNC and robotics into that, thereby incorporating all these things and uh, uh, allowing it uh, to have an, uh, an flexible assembly and a flexible uh, 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 alternate uh, 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 assembly where we have entered into a shift of that particular mass production to and um, flexible manufacturing uh, depends on uh, e even with the provided the production uh, the same production line we, we have incorporated the technology we have as I say, you make use of uh, assisted technology to that and we started shifting it to an um, flexible manufacturing then uh, the arena has come to an uh, uh, computer aided design or computer aided manufacturing and after that in dnc and robotics which uh, you know furthermore uh, has uh, emphasized on uh, computer integrated all these uh, three has made uh, this thing into computer integrated manufacturing where the industry start working as an uh, you know and semi automated industries where with respect to uh, the whatever the design and uh, the aspects that is uh, required by that day of scenario we could be able to generate the products with this uh, computer integrated manufacturing then after it, it has further, you know, started. Still, there is a lack of utilization of the plant completely. There are certain you cannot keep your emissions ideal for a longer period. Depends on the you know the requirement of the market area. Because of that, there is an uh, um, lean, uh, sorry, an ideal period that is there in uh, the industry to cope up with that. Once again, they have assured there is a quality control. 
and then Kanban system, Kanban cards has been introduced. All these things are JIT concepts, JIT concepts. The Tokyo company has introduced these uh, JIT concepts and uh, they have used also this few engineering tools which led to lean manufacturing where we started, you know, uh, doing the things as uh, cut shorting our cost of, uh, you know, manufacturing on maintaining bulks of bulks of inventory either in the forms of raw material or in the forms of the material handling or in the forms of the output products whatever that is coming out through us coming out from the industry and uh, one thing that they are they made ensure that the quality checking will be done in between the processes not at the end of the process if you are doing in between the workstations uh, in between the intermediate stations of that particular if there is any a, a product that is found to be defective with the, the sample, we cannot test the entire mass production. We will only test the uh, sample of that particular thing where these quality control teams will be taking care of that particular uh, sample uh, testing and they will be doing uh, all these sorts of you know uh, quality testing and they will be performing the things and uh, they will be rejecting the components of the so that uh, the rejection rate of the components at the end of the product will be very minimal when it is done in between and after that they have introduced the Kanban cards. Kanban cards will have an adjusting time period where they started you know uh, how exactly you are going to um, use uh, your uh, the cards will be you know sent for that particular station and then there is some raw material requirement that will be brought down and they, they will be using this furthermore when it comes to the lean lean is also related to a kind of a flexible manufacturing system starting from the very down uh, low lane of a uh, flexible uh, manufacturing uh, this low lane of uh, flexible manufacturing Lean is a little bit much more sophisticated area where you'll be doing a lot more additional things. Here we'll have an alternate assemblies and uh, the uh, very high integrated machines what we use here. But still we, here we use the techniques in case of a lean manufacturing to avoid all sorts of the bottlenecks that is available in between the process in between the process then later on still we do identify certain more areas of uh, uh, you know the inventory to cut short it further furthermore we conceptualize the uh, uh, technique the total quality management where how exactly you are going to maintain the quality of your you know, um, final output material that is coming out and the, this uh, material resource planning too where it is going to list all the uh, list of items that is required a little bit much earlier only these people will be bringing down that particular thing and using few more engineering tools whether how exactly you are uh, processing uh, that particular uh, um, raw material in the either the industry is working on a fixed layout or it is working on a process layout or it is working on a product um, product uh, layout uh, type of uh, production line depends on that they use the few engineering tools to um, make it uh, much more flexible and they have introduced the concept of uh, JIT in that particular area later on Furthermore, after this JIT, JIT, JIT has occupied few, all these things right from, you know, uh, the flexible manufacturing to the uh, JIT and uh, later on to Agile manufacturing, all these things have captured only the 21st uh, century manufacturing uh, engineering not uh, much earlier to all these things were uh, introduced in the 21st century but uh, they have um, taken their own uh, time to um, justify and identify them the manufacturer the manufacturing processes and the manufacturers have taken their own time to adopt the uh, layouts and adopt themselves to uh, utilize these type of uh, concentration slowly the industries have shifted to uh, the technique called as an uh, either the just in time or the lean manufacturing and further after the lean we have entered into this uh, CACs and engineering tools where the concept of uh, concurrent engineering has uh, to keep to the picture. This concurrent engineering is what is nothing but called as a continuously restructuring. What is that is required uh, for the uh, present uh, day uh, industry and you should be you know continuously revising your own uh, layouts, your own uh, product, your own uh, design structure so that it will be ready to meet this particular market demand. And uh, finally this uh, BPR 
BPR is what is something but called as it is an uh, you know um, business process uh, re-engineering techniques and then e-manufacturing concept which has led to agile maximum to the maximum extent uh, there is an, a lot of uh, confusion that has been established uh, what's that uh, sort of confusion is uh, if you talk uh, about agile the people will say agile and lean are one and the same all these things just in time concurrent engineering everything will come under lean manufacturing no it's not the case that the lean manufacturing agile manufacturing is just in time and concurrent engineering all the things are falling under one particular case it's not that that particular uh, arena actually this concept of agile has been introduced much early in the 21st century somewhere in 1990s but still it has you know morphed the uh, ideology of this lean just in time and concurrent engineering thereby changing and designing its own principles of agility and uh, becoming as an agile manufacturing what this bpr is actually is uh, this business process re-engineering is uh, we are going to redesign our entire business plan such that the business plan is going to be modified and restructured according to the present day scenario of the industry and the demand of the market and e-manufacturing depends on the you know uh, make the best use of uh, the technology and uh, the software of the industry has to be upgraded every day so that you are going to start you know producing no question of you know uh, 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 handling the machine or putting the machine into an ideal run every machine will be continuously working but all the layouts are not of uniform each layout will be performing one or uh, more uh, than one jobs depends on that no question of you know the production will be definitely in case of a higher rate, but it's not of a uniform one particular product that will be produced in mass. It will be multiple products that will be produced in mass. Depends on the demand of the industry. Whether the market is having this much amount of demand, you are going to perform this particular manufacturing concept. Hope this has been understood uh, by the audience. Moving further, what is uh, agile manufacturing? To discuss what is Agile Manufacturing, as uh, I said uh, in the earlier slide, Agile Manufacturing was, uh, you know, predated by the concept of uh, JIT, uh, just in Manufacturing, which is developed by Toyota Company in the 1960s, but later on, you know, it is uh, furthermore uh, developed in 1990s. The first available uh, you know published data is uh, on uh, in uh, 1991 by Goldman he has given uh, you know uh, the concept of uh, agile and how exactly this agile has been put into that and uh, it's an uh, you know he named the agile as uh, 21st century manufacturing uh, enterprise strategy where this is going to you know morph this uh, just in time into during this 30 years of period, 30 decades of period of time, what happened is it started the uh, just in time into, slowly it morphed the just in time into lean manufacturing, then it morphed it into cycle time manufacturing, then it morphed into the time based competition and quick response manufacturing. What this agile is, this agile is quick response manufacturing. Depending on the industry requirement, the, the entire production system should be changed themselves, restructured themselves such that it is going to uh, respond to the industry uh, market requirement, thereby the industry could be able to meet the demand and uh, sustain with the competition that is available in that particular scenario. But uh, while well, GIST and others have got a referred production system, these are referred production, this is what they are going to produce for that particular, what exactly this just-in-time is, as and when there is a demand for that industry, there is a demand for that but one particular product, they are going to uh, produce that particular product, whatever may be the demand that is there, they are going to supply the product at that particular. This entire production is, uh, it is not as far as the end output product, what is coming out at that particular period of time, but it is also re referred to the input raw material, the input raw material that is actually required to produce uh, for that particular product which the industry is going to produce or manufacturing that particular 
product the inventory zero inventory and zero inventory of already produced product so no question of any kind of a lagging of the material that is available at that particular area somebody is speaking uh, madam uh, sorry for uh, interruption madam uh, some uh, resound uh, we are getting some resound madam can you please uh, adjust your microphone uh, resound is coming uh, yes madam resound we are getting and Please check now. Yeah, now it's okay, madam. Thank you. It's, it's a fan sound which is coming out as a result. Ah, maybe, maybe, okay. madam. Okay, please. Uh, uh, uh -huh. We can carry it. Carry on, madam. Thank you. Yeah. Because uh, this uh, agile manufacturing is not about only exactly dealing with the production uh, systems what we have. This is actually what is happening on the, in the factory shop floor. Because uh, JIT is holding the shop floor as an in, uh, inventory control where you are absolutely maintaining in zero inventory. Where this will be, uh, uh, what is happening on the shop floor about software that, is, that was growing in importance. Because uh, it is uh, it is not the conventional machines what we using at uh, the present day scenario because there is a large amount of uh, uh, changes or uh, the shift uh, has been done already in case of an automation in uh, that particular case of an uh, arena what is happening here is day by day the uh, present today the machinery what we are using the software that we are using for you know for the complete automation and flexibility of that particular uh, layout has been changing it is uh, you know taking care this agile manufacturing is also taking care about uh, not only the shop floor but also the software that is growing in importance of uh, this particular thing and increasing underpinning effect in the whole industry okay just is only simply it is an uh, an bridge between the demand and supply where we are able to satisfy both the demand and supply whereas this agile is uh, is something like uh, you know you are supplying the components meeting the competitiveness in the market and uh, slowly changing uh, not not slowly we cannot name it as and slowly quickly changing ourselves modifying ourselves to whatever the requirements of the industry that is actually required for that and to define it in a systematic fashion, what is uh, in JIT is, uh, as a, sorry, as agile is, agile is an approach to uh, manufacturing that leverages flexibility, bottom-up invention, and augmentation in order to adapt to an iterative process to changing the conditions. Uh, try to recollect one thing. When we talk about uh, uh, any, any industry with respect to the management uh, uh, principles, we immediately we visualize one particular pyramid here. Remember that pyramid, and uh, that pyramid will start from uh, uh, top end of the peak position to it will flow the flow lines to the bottom most level. Whereas this will start from the bottom to the topmost level. That is what exactly this uh, this thing is. This is a leverage to flexibility. Flexibility means your all your production lines should be flexible enough uh, to uh, incorporate any kind of an uh, dramatic or uh, drastic changes that is required uh, uh, from the design end. And uh, the bottom up invention from the shop floor from the shop floor to the uh, topmost. Uh, 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 hierarchy of the administration the invention should pass through and the augmentation you should have an you know the piling of uh, the things and uh, the cumulative piling of uh, the flexibility that what we are in, in using it in order to adapt the things and in order to adapt and appreciate the things and all these things should be in an iterative process continuously it will be changing with respect to uh, the demand and uh, the market whatever that is there as far as the changes in the market that is taking place you should be continuously changing ourselves to that particular uh, era and uh, this uh, uh, the research definition of uh, this is the industry oriented definition whereas the research definition of uh, agile is something different where it is the capability to survive and prosper in conditions of unpredictable change by reacting quickly and uh, sorry by reacting quickly and effectively by changing markets because uh, one thing is very sure whatever the product that we are uh, having today is an, an older version or an older variant immediately after the next study of this launch of this particular product. 
the next immediate day some other fellow will be launching a new product into the market so that this product will be so it requires in, in continuous uh, uh, striving and prospering conditions to unpredict the changes may need to be and uh, to a larger extent or the changes may be to a slightly extent so that we'll also incorporate uh, those changes apart from that we'll add few more uh, additional advantage features to our own product so that we'll be readily you know selling that particular product to the market and we'll be capturing efficiently you know uh, capturing the market uh, requirements as such okay the changes in the market we need to incorporate readily in the industry so that all our either the um, like our line is in production line or our line is a product line this should uh, you know uh, change accordingly with respect to the changes what is happening as far as the market demand is and why basically we need to have an agility here we need to recollect one thing that uh, recollection is we collect the uh, you know uh, the overturned bathtub curve overturned bathtub bathtub curve will be something like this you assume that there is an u that is being in u shaped uh, curve that has been inverted that is what is something we call as an overturned bathtub curve which reflects uh, uh, the product cycle the product cycle what exactly this product cycle is we have got a need to discuss about this uh, product cycle uh, we need to have a good old uh, the when we started the manufacturing uh, scenario introducing the products into the market and uh, how exactly it is going to justify when we talk in terms of the product cycle it will have a uh, big boom with we when we start initially launching of that particular product cycle then it will have an ideal period over some period of the time then it will be stripped down because of the competitive uh, the competitors which are entering into the market no product no market is in monopoly here the markets are oligopolistic markets where these oligopolistic markets there will be an n number of competitors simultaneously parallelly they will be entering into that that is why the global competition competition is intensifying because of this oligopolistic market the global competition is intensifying there will be n number of competition even i can name it as it is not n it is n to the power of n this many number of market competitors are intensifying the market if we are launching one particular product the product will be readily immediately you know capturing the market attention and the immediate next day the product is an outdated product to that this is the one main prime area where um, point where we need this agile and uh, the another case is mass markets are fragmenting into niche markets what is this niche markets are these are you know in segmented area of uh, selling or buying the products this segmented area is uh, you cannot have an versatile uh, uh, plant layout we do have in plant layout we can have we can incorporate such an amount of changes to that particular layout we can have in changes of a wide variety of the um, um, production of the particular product that you can require there is it cannot be used as a changes that is required uh, in the another uh, case in in such a uh, Lot, to the larger extent no industry can incorporate the changes that has been uh, made uh, to that particular product okay and uh, simultaneously these uh, kind of an uh, niche markets have been you know uh, putting an emphasis on this particular mass market uh, to um, restrict to sell the products that because it has got all sorts of the competitors into that and they will be segmented into only one particular variety of the products that will be selling and in that particular variety of products there will be n number of competitors who are selling because of that also we need to uh, sustain we need to sustain and survive with that particular case we need agile and the cooperation amongst companies no company is going to produce uh, only one single product all the all the products that is required because one particular component or the product which we are going to manufacture is not of uh, the um, all the products which is associated in between intermediate assemblies or if they have got any kind of an additional elements that need to be you know acting as an uh, um, 
midline uh, uh, aligning agents to that then also we need to depend on uh, sub, sub uh, companies where all the companies should have in uh, cooperation amongst themselves so that uh, who are entering into direct competition with each other they should also uh, take care about whether what the another company is doing and the, what the, the exactly they are you know entering into in direct competition launching this their own uh, product and very short product cycle good old end we used to have a long product cycle long product life cycle because the global competition is comparatively much much lesser than compared to the present day trend the global competition is comparatively you know uh, it has uh, taken an exponential boom in the present day trend than compared to the golden cycle we used to have an an uh, structured product life cycle in good old days but with the product life cycle is much small it will take and boom it will satisfy to is in very shorter period of life uh, span and it will down down there this uh, during this particular thing you should have an uh, short la product life cycle as uh, the development time should be very minimal production lean time should be minimal so that you will be as soon as you have got an idea captured this idea has to be immediately transformed into the net output product thereby minimizing the product life cycle it immediately captures that particular market if not it will be immediately this this will be there may be in uh, the like ideas that will be coming out or there may be any kind of an uh, another uh, uh, manufacturer who will be entering into that before we sell our product they will be going to sell our product they will be going to sell their products and they will be going to sell the you know still the um, maximum extent of the market and what exactly these customers requirements are another area where we what we need to have why we need this uh, particular agile is uh, these customers expectations are low volume products high quality and uh, custom products it is exclusively designed by themselves for themselves for one particular type of customers these customers want themselves to be treated as an individuals because if i own one particular product it is exclusively designed for me and the quality of the product should be high and we should have an uh, uh, you know the size of the product should be as minimal and the production volume of the product should be as minimal it should continuously you know uh, uh, emphasize and demand in the market this product has got a demand in the market simultaneously doing that we should also uh, you know consider one particular thing where what exactly if this the, if we are putting in demand in the market whether the customers are going to float down to some other competitor that also we need to take we are keeping in demand in the market simultaneously we are also maintaining our own uh, uh, networking with the customers so that the customers will not be flow floating away from uh, the one particular uh, our own product to the another area these are all the few points where i have listed uh, uh, so that uh, with what is the the requirement of agile to uh, start the uh, production or else shift the mass production paradigm to the lean and then further to agile even lean to the maximum extent all the industry industries are still today they are following the lean manufacturing not uh, and they have not shifted maximum to the agile manufacturing let's move further some keys to agility and flexibility before i talk about what is uh, this uh, keys to agility and flexibility and uh, we know what is flexibility easily adaptable to whatever the changes that is there agility is uh, it's a quick response or it's a quick change to uh, whatever that is happening in the market we we need to have an uh, e readily we need to react with that particular market to determine customer needs quickly and continuously reposition the company's uh, you know reposition the company against its customer if you are not going to capture the uh, customer needs quickly then uh, will be no longer there will be certain amount of you know an uh, uh, um, freeze period uh, where your product cycle time will be there you can withstand as a flat curve in that particular period of time later on 
you need to drop you need to drop no more our industrial line or the production line is going to sustain with that particular thing because of that we need to identify the customer needs very quickly and continuously change continuously we need to be changing that particular thing there will be slight design modifications in that they're not in much a larger extent but simultaneously if there is in demand of to a larger extent then we need to launch a very new product into the industry so that to sustain with the parallel competitors who are all launching the identical and the more advanced products than compared to whatever what we are manufacturing this particular industry is focusing on that and uh, the design things quickly based on initial needs as uh, uh, I said in the earlier slide each customer wants uh, he the customer wants uh, he need to be treated as an initial all the products that we are launching are in customized product for one particular customer you cannot have one single customized product for each and every customer by and large take all the needs of the customer and uh, identify it into forms of in groups so that that particular group is going to perform the required uh, need based uh, you know uh, that sat satisfies the needs of uh, that uh, uh, customers who are falling under one particular category then put it into a large put all them into a larger scale quality and production quickly we have to put this into what should be the uh, how much amount of market ratio that we have to cover then uh, scale up up to that particular thing and uh, set the quality limits for that and uh, have the production lines very quickly and respond to changing volumes and uh, mix it quickly if you have any kind of a change in the production volume then also we have to check and we have to shift it into in multiple lines or we have to cut short into the multiple lines and uh, make all these things to come where we need to focus on whether there is any bottleneck that is coming out uh, from these changing volumes uh, at one particular point of industry while we are mixing uh, the uh, volumes here we need to identify the bottlenecks if there, is, there exists any kind of a bottlenecks in the industry and those bottlenecks have to be addressed properly so that uh, these mixing will be much as quick as possible there won't be any kind of an uh, you know time lag in that particular area to respond the crisis quickly if there is still after taking care of all these uh, uh, you know problem uh, problems once again if there is any crisis that comes uh, if, if, if your product is absolutely going to be an outdated product then also we have to respond quickly this is what exactly has been you know happened to the uh, nokia people where they have launched and they have you know, captured all the market continuously now they are re reinitiating their own products to sustain in the industry and uh, coming to the concept of uh, agility look at this particular uh, uh, diagram where this is uh, the center one is what is uh, the agile uh, supply chain we have got a few more uh, this thing one is the market sensitivity network based process alignment and virtual how exactly all these four is compensating this agile supply chain? This uh, agile supply chain will enable us to learn on uh, what exactly this concept of uh, agility is. Uh, here, the market sensitivity. Supply chain is capable. Your supply chain should be capable of uh, meeting the required, uh, responding to real demand. You, that whether the demand is of larger extent or the demand is of smaller extent, you cannot continuously. You know, your supply should be. It should meet the demand with the. A little bit slow. You need to always keep a little bit demand for your products. You cannot have an in supply of surplus of your products into the market. Then also you are foregoing the market ratio in that particular case. You need to maintain the demand simultaneously. You need to take care whether that particular demand is market sensitive. Start continuously analyze the markets, continuously get the feedbacks from the markets, and establish a uh, demand uh, supply to demand uh, curve, and uh, try to identify the demand. What is the remain real demand that is there, uh, and do e-marketing and get the feedback. And uh, this supply chain need to be sent to the agile uh, supply, where it is go going to uh, react with respect to this particular market supply chain. What is the demand of that particular market is going to reply with, with that. And uh, the another case is uh, virtual markets. What is this virtual? Here is uh, information-based supply chain. 
rather than inventory based no inventory when the concept of jit has been introduced there there won't be any kind of an inventory in that particular arena monkey we don't have any kind of an inventory in that particular case we we assume that we are working with a zero inventory so we work on the virtual uh, you know information uh, of uh, that particular supply chain rather whatever the inventory that we have if this is a demand that is there immediately we call for that and we procure the raw material and we do the things in that and network based network based here is uh, it sense uh, network based is on uh, the edi and internet enabled partners these edi and internet enabled partners are this is uh, electronic data interchange and internet enabled partners these people are going to help the industry in maintaining their supply chain this is what the actual real demand is the this real demand is in dynamic in nature it is not static in nature or else it will be you know it's not in periodic uh, variation that is taking place in that this is dynamic in nature hour to hour or else batch to batch whatever the lot that will be production from one shift to another shift the industry which is working out this real demand will be varying with that uh, with the help of uh, this uh, electronic data interchange partners or the internet enabled partners we need to maintain that particular supply chain this is what the industry is going to producing and this is what the market market demand is with respect to that uh, the agile supply chain is going to operate and uh, lastly the process alignment what this process alignment is uh, collaborative working between the buyers and suppliers with a joint product development we need to have a collaboration with both the uh, uh, buyer also and with the supplier also we are going to supply the products to that and they, then the supplier is going to supply the products to the buyers where there should be a joint collaboration between those two to have a product development in that and a common system and the sharing of the information all these fellows have will be adding once again to this market sensitivity these fellows are going to uh supplement this market into what is the actual real demand and what is the needs of the customer and how exactly we are going to maintain your supply and uh, later on later on uh, the azel manufacturing principle says uh, when we look into the azel as uh, the maximum there is a confusion that has been already established in the industry with uh, the lean to azel what is that is there this lean and uh, both azel the uh, indian industries are still working to the maximum extent they started shifting to azel but still they are not uh, not totally complete uh, shifted into that particular azel uh, manufacturing area where this uh, lean uh, uh, and lean manufacturing area is uh, you know after mass production after mass production all this uh, lean manufacturing uh, area has stood up with that and later on they have shifted that themselves to the zit here this uh, lean manufacturing is uh, still if you look into the uh, uh, supplements of both the uh, azel and lean lean mainly focuses on reduce waste anti complexity means uh, reduce waste here in the sense uh, it 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 tries to you know um, uh, reduce uh, the amount of uh, inventory that is there and anti complexity the product should be you know um, much uh, flexible enough in that particular area and establish standard processes whatever are the available processes that is there try to establish that and continuously improve and uh, here the azel is uh, iterate faster iterate faster means continuously changing continuously changing and uh, bottom up what exactly this bottom up flexibility that i let you know in the next slide where there is a commonality between both this azel and lean that is one thing is both the manufacturing trends is going to lead to the increased productivity increase in quality empower the people empower the people here in the sense uh, it is not only you know uh, strengthening the 
manufacturer but it also strengthening the buyer it is also going to strengthen the supplier it's also strengthening the workers and it's also strengthening the employees in the industry so that they are going to get ample training they are going to get accustomed with the uh, latest uh, trends and they are going to accustomed with the software that is available and uh, finally the la, uh, focus is on to respond to customer demands much quickly much quickly in both these cases both the things will be uh, because of that there is an uh, confusion in between the lean and the sale because there is a commonality both the things will emphasis on increased productivity both the things will emphasis on the increase in uh, quality both the things will emphasis on uh, empower the people and also the uh, the respond to the customer requirement and uh, while uh, this uh, lean and agile is overlapping with that, the principles are different. What this agile manufacturing principle says, uh, iterate faster. Lean lochus are the lean principles are something like this. It, the principle says it uh, the main focus is on reducing the waste, anti complexity, and establish standard procedures, continuous to improve. Whereas for agile, it is uh, uh, it is iterate faster. The principle of agility it itself defines uh, iterate faster. Move quickly, move quickly. That's it. Agile manufacturing encourages the teams to go quickly uh, through multiple versions of process or product. Your product or process line should be flexible enough such that uh, as and when there is a requirement in the market, requirement from the customer, you need to change yourself in order to iterate the fast. Uh, uh, iterate faster agile teams to should work on concrete goals over short not because we cannot have a continuous change in the we cannot keep going on changing our own equipment changing our own material etc we need to set for a predetermined this much amount of period of time this is the goals and this is going to we, we are going to meet this particular goals in that particular period of time both the goals and time frame are critical in we need to cut short both these, uh, you know, the goals and time frame at that particular. We cannot keep in much uh, in the goals at a much higher level and taking it to design and reach the goal to a larger uh, uh, time period of extension. By the time before the launch of the product it itself, uh, it might have reached to the end of the product life cycle. It might have reached to the end of it because it might have lost the market because of uh, the you know, uh, intensification in the global market, the trend in the global market. We need to cut short our goals, and the goals should be on a much uh, uh, solid base. And we need to maintain the time frame much uh, at a lower end to uh, uh, inter uh, to cope up with this particular agility. And the goal should be realistic and measurable, not in terms of qualitative aspects. It should be in terms of you know uh, measurable aspects, quantitative aspects, but quality of the product should be required but still it should you are going to reach your goal and the goals are measurable it should fit something to the industry finally flexibility the another point is flexible in order to bend under external forces not to bend under external forces manufacturing companies have need to flexible systems because uh, if you have got a rigid layout, you, you cannot uh, implement this particular flexible layout. Their internal structure should be, internal structure in the manufacturing layout should be dynamic enough to rebound quickly from uh, external uh, disturbances, whatever the uh, you know, changes that is taking place externally. These agile manufacturers are aware that environmental factors such as economic, political, environmental, social and technological they have to take care about all these factors uh, which continuously require them to constantly stay constantly stay on their own toes unless until you have got a proper awareness on all these things uh, you cannot sustain in the uh, present day scenario they should also make sure that every component of uh, their system can grow organically to adapt their changes whether it could be easily adaptable for that uh, to the present day scenario. You should set the goal, you should design the goal, you should design the product such that your product is easily adaptable to if any changes that is required by the market. Not making much higher uh, changes of uh, structural changes inside that, but you should uh, have an adaptability to do certain amount of the changes here. 
and this is what the agile uh, manufacturing principle says uh, as i have uh, discussed in the earlier slide remember the pyramid pyramid in case of uh, the management principles what we visualize there they said that from the top to bottom what we are moving in the present, uh, mass production area whereas in a case of an agile manufacturing we will move from bottom to top look here what is the difference between the uh, top down to bottom up top down is what is nothing but called as a, from the top uh, the hierarchy the topmost hierarchy will be available in the topmost level of that particular pyramid whereas uh, well we move furthermore there isn't the bottom down uh, 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 bottom area where the remaining people all the detailed instruction will be given for this particular shop floor once there is a shop uh, problem arises in the shop floor they have to you know go, keep going on telling this until it reaches uh, there will be a very much amount of lean period that is available where here idle idle period that is available the bottom up area where all these things are flexible resources quick changes and flexible resources there will be in center portion here it will be you know they will be acting as an hierarchy here and these are all uh, you know few leadership roles and we'll have in boxes and lines which are less important to keep in uh, focus of action on uh, focus uh, in this particular area and uh, lastly the teams uh, which built uh, around end-to-end -to -end accountability okay to uh, sum up all these things uh, what exactly this uh, agile manufacturers favor on uh, bottom-up approach is uh, in which uh, the ideas and the directives flow seamless between all the layers of the companies directly it will flow there won't be any kind of an uh, you know interruptions in between it will be flowing all the way uh, in between the companies in between the entire uh, uh, layers of the company right from you know the uh, resource uh, line to the leadership to the teams who are building the uh, product uh, design and uh, finally the boxes which will be focusing on that particular uh, action of that particular thing with this the directors and managers give operators and shop floor workers a voice what is happening in the company they will be going to give uh, the respective guidelines to that particular shop floor workers or the operators so that they will be ready readily implementing uh, immediately implementing that particular uh, instructions uh, onto the shop floor the agile manufacturing uh, uh, supports the idea that those closer to the manufacturing source challenges understand with them by the best how exactly you are going to understand the manufacturing challenges that these agile manufacturing concepts are going to support the more the operators the engineers and the business executives are collaborative with each other so that uh, they will be working as a whole to bring out uh, their product with uh, the much more agility the collaboration across the functions and the seniority levels yield higher value of the value to that particular product and the process because if there is any change in the design if there is any change in the uh, that today market trend that is there that will be immediately communicated to the shop floor people so that they will be you know uh, keep uh, incorporating those changes to that particular product or they will be maintaining the flow lines in that particular fashion and so that there won't be any kind of a uh, loss or a damage that will be caused to uh, the industry to maintain a little bit in inventory or else uh, excess amount of production or else uh, in lesser amount of uh, uh, production when it comes to the supply and demand and lastly argumentation argumentation is what is something but call as adding up adding up of the things what is understood in contrast to automation automation is uh, automation consists of automating the workers task where the machine it itself is doing it's not the question of machine it itself is doing it enhances the capability of the worker to start working with the technology good old days we used to have in when the industrial automation is taking place we used to have in large uh, uh, you know an uh, resistance towards the industrial automation meaning that the people are going to lose the jobs the people are going to you know uh, get uh, uh, you know um, 
very much uh, uh, avoiding of all the missions it's not a case of all the missions are doing it's a case of uh, you know increasing the capability of the worker along with the technology so that the worker will also be, will get trained according to the technology and they will be also you know uh, putting their efforts and uh, putting their maximum best level to sustain in the industry and uh, this is the conceptual model of uh, agile manufacturing and uh, looking at this particular conceptual model of uh, agile manufacturing what is uh, this uh, agile uh, manufacturing is uh, we have got an uh, intermediate box and there are uh, two different external sources let me discuss this uh, intermediate box first uh, then uh, we'll talk about these external sources this uh, box consists of something like uh, an uh, human resources human resources is the manpower which is uh, being uh, you know having in that particular industry what the people are uh, um, um, having uh, who whomsoever are the workers are in uh, there are uh, the industry depends on the type of the industry we can have an uh, much uh, uh, unskilled to an uh, more skilled worker depends on the type of the industry the present today the, to the maximum industries uh, they will have all the uh, trained workers only for few few areas in the shop floor they will have an untrained workers even the untrained worker can perform that particular job on the shop floor in only few areas but in by and large in all the remaining areas the worker need to be these human resources department will take care about the training team work motivation and organic reward too so that uh, because uh, as uh, as the worker is adopting themselves to the technology as the worker is adopting themselves to uh, you know um, uh, changes in variation in the technology they are upgrading themselves uh, we need to reward those uh, uh, people so that uh, there will be a continuous encouragement that is given to you and uh, this is what exactly the human resources in agile management it plays a major role because the agility cannot be a single term where we say that iterate iterate faster move ahead and uh, uh, flexible to adapt it is uh, the whom who are uh, you using is if you can upgrade your software if you upgrade your technology if you can upgrade your machines uh, the worker need to be upgraded uh, along with that particular technology then only you are going to get the required output of uh, that particular layout plant layout then uh, value chain integration value chain integration is uh, interdepartmental cooperation is required from one particular department to another department and the cooperation with the suppliers cooperation with the customers all these are required you need to continuously you, you know, to get uh, it is in a case of uh, it is uh, what is something but called as we can make best use of this electronic data uh, interchange mechanism or else e manufacturing concepts where this value integration will be continuously maintained so that we will be uh, continuously having a rapport with the interdepartmental people and simultaneously with the suppliers and simultaneously if the customer is making one particular this is what exactly we need to change we we need to support support the customer we need to do the necessary modifications in that then concurrent engineering simultaneous development of product and process because we cannot keep uh, and uh, every product will have its own life cycle we cannot keep the product as such as such there should be a continuous improvement in the product if uh, today we are launching a product uh, for at least past uh, the remaining one month or two months or three months quarterly we need to do um, modifications with the product and the process so that uh, there will be a simultaneous development with that particular product and we need to have multi functional teams not a single team we need the one particular team will be taking care of only design and another person team will be taking care of an r&d another particular team will be taking care of e e e manufacturing the market survey etc and uh, the close collaborations throughout the entire process so that uh, we can attain this concurrent engineering to add up with the changes what is taking place the advanced technology all the industrial layout should 
possess this particular advanced technology, advanced design technologies, whatever that is readily available, in that we, we the industry should be the first one to adopt this particular technology so that it is going to capture the market, so that it is going to incorporate the um, trends, whatever are the needs of that particular customer, the trends in the market, and uh, they can incorporate the same in their own uh, manufacturing uh, of uh, that particular product. Then advances in manufacturing technology, what are all that is taking place, we should have an eye on that and we should also maintain, uh, you know, whether we can adopt all those changes technology in our own industrial arena. Then information integrated systems with, the, as I said, we can make best use of this EDA or in manufacturing to have this information systems integrated with both the suppliers and the man customers. Then information integrated information of uh, that information within the manufacturing system. This is also there should be continuous flow line of the information that should be available right from the shop floor to the uh, top management so that the, the design department to the R&D department to uh, the quality department so that all the people will be continuously in rapport and if there is any kind of an um, crisis that has been occurred immediately it has to be resolved. And the planning of the system, the system should be planned as I said it should not be in the form of a pyramid it should be in the form of a circle right from bottom up you will be able to uh, increase your productivity enhance your productivity increase the quality of the component and meet the present day market trend the knowledge of management the organization should have this knowledge of management how exactly your organizational norms is supporting for experimentation of if you want to have a new launch of the product then also we have to think about that then uh, working teams that uh, how exactly these teams are collaborating with that whether the teams are having each and every session you can have a brainstorm but continuously we cannot have there should be a uh, uh, series and brainstorming session where you will be uh, having an idea generation pull up all the ideas from all the sectors of the in industry and uh, uh, um, sum up together, we'll have in uh, selecting a best idea and try to have an experimentation on that. Then the formal mechanisms for a diffusion of best practices. You should have in a formal mechanism, we should maintain certain uh, best practices on that so that the, the on, on that particular base, the industry survival will be much more. And uh, this is what exactly the Azile manufacturing internal structure is, conceptual model of that particular. Whereas when it comes to the external sources, which is going to affect this Azile manufacturing, one is on to the um, right hand side, this uh, turbulent environment. Turbulent environment is uh, the outside market is uh, highly, you know, dynamic, highly dynamic. Day by day, it's changing. We need to incorporate that particular dynamism in this particular allied manufacturing and hostility. You need to host, you need to host, you need to conduct few surveys, you need to conduct few uh, interviews with the suppliers and you need to conduct few interviews with the customers. So that continuous uh, uh, feedback sessions of that is going to uh, uh, stabilize this uh, turbulent environment. And uh, simultaneously, on to the another hand, there is a manufacturing strength. That manufacturing strength is what is the cost of uh, cost that has been incurred by that particular industry, and the flexibility, the quality, delivery, and service. How exactly you are doing? Simply, we launch the product with, and we have got the flexibility and we maintain the quality. Still, post delivery also we need to do certain amount of um, keep certain amount of service where. If there is any kind of an after maintaining after checking all these things if there is any kind of an values we need to attend to that which is the manufacturing strength of that particular uh, as in finally the business performance how exactly you are going to sustain how exactly you are going to design your business plan and you have plan with respect to the design performance to uh, um, sustain in the competitiveness that is available in the market no doubt if you are launching any product you can uh, quote any product that ideally immediately there will be any number of competitors the next immediately they will they will be entering into the market with the same ideology the same conceptualization same type of the product that is available a little bit a little minute changes in that they will be launching their own product into that that we need to take care of while uh, do writing and business plan how best we are how adaptable we are to the competitiveness 
things in the market that is available if the product is much uh, you know much uh, uh, new one and it will gain to a limited period of time to a limited period of time the product life cycle then also it will start drooping that drooping time period we can we need to stretch much ahead so that uh, we'll enhance we'll enhance our own life cycle of the product simultaneously we'll also improve improve the uh, product design in that uh, so that uh, our uh, product will sustain much longer in the market not changing much uh, higher variations with respect to our either the production line or the process line. hope you understood the conceptual model of uh, azel manufacturing moving ahead the uses of uh, this particular azel what is the uh, uses of this particular azel the highest priority to any industry not for that is even not for the azel highest priority to any type of an manufacturing concept is uh, it's only you know um, the customer satisfaction customer is god if you look into in good old and uh, uh, any kind of an industry which has you know maintaining certain norms customer is god so we need to give highest priority to the customer satisfaction and uh, welcoming the changes with the requirements frequent uh, delivery of software frequent delivery of software here in the sense we need to upgrade ourselves with the frequent changes that is taking place in the chip technology and the business people and the developers cooperating daily these people because there will be in continuous interaction between the business partners and the developers who are involved in that particular uh, manufacturing industry and the built in products around motivated people we need to keep an eye on the r and i we need to complete continuously uh, reiterate the ideas in the r and i so that uh, is there any further more modification further more adaptation further more changes that we are doing in that that should be you know uh, built products around the motivated people face to face conversation because uh, that leads to an uh, best uh, one of the best practices when so uh, because uh, the fellow is sitting somewhere and you are sitting somewhere you need to um, have a face to face conversation between uh, both the parties so that which will lead to a best uh, uh, output for that particular industry progress measured by uh, what is the continuous progress that is being taking place each and every minute in the industry we should be on continuous lines of trend within uh, software and the sustainable development phase development is sustain sustainable means longer period of time longer period of time you are going to maintain your development it's not within a short term period the goals should be goal should be high and on concrete basis so that your development is continuous your development is continuous this is what the, the uh, industry requires and uh, continuous attention to the technical assistance you need to have in if there is any problem that is uh, occurring uh, you need to have in people who are assisting the uh, technical uh, uh, assistance uh, to that and uh, uh, simplicity of the part you cannot have and uh, keep going on designing in much uh, rigid project in that because nowhere uh, the agility won't uh, sustain in that particular case the product should be simple and uh, self organizing teams as and when there is a requirement in the uh, changes uh, are any changes that is there because uh, the term it itself agility these teams should be restructured these teams should be restructured and reorganized such that uh, they will be falling under interdiscipline or they will be falling under their own team and they will be falling and that and you should have a regular reflection and adaptation readily the industry should adopt and it should reflect to the present day trend of uh, the customer needs or the uh, trends towards an adaptation all uh, the case studies i have focused is exclusively on uh, four industries uh, with respect to the spain and i am thankful to the one professor uh, daniel uh, um, from the university of uh, uh, ovidas Spain University. Uh, uh, thank you for his contributions for uh, developing this particular case studies. I have uh, collected from uh, him to develop these particular case studies here. And uh, going further into the case studies, this is what uh, up to now we have learnt on uh, what is uh, the introduction right from the manufacturing trends to 
uh, to the lean than to the agile manufacturing how exactly it has uh, shifted the mass production to an uh, paradigm shift to the agile manufacturing and slowly uh, after that we have learned the concepts of uh, agile and why we need this particular agile and what are the concepts and what are the uses and uh, implications of for that particular agile then uh, going into entering into the case study here it is an opel epsana company and car manufacturing company uh, almost by this time it will be around 30 years uh, uh, from the period of uh, you know, the age of the plant maybe uh, the data is a little bit few uh, years back uh, uh, during that period of time uh, it has gotten this many number of uh, workers and uh, they have got a higher level of trade union they have given importance to that particular trade unions and the type of uh, production and process line is uh, a flow line continuously the process will be uh, flowing uh, from uh, um, one particular uh, starting from one end to another end where from the last end of the particular flow line the product will be as an uh, net output product the company could be able to manufacture the outside of the car part or outside of the shield or in chassis or etc whatever the, the parts of uh, that particular car that is there this is an uh, car manufacturing company which i have selected because uh, i'm dealing with this mechanic and uh, uh, volume and type of the product is uh, it is a high volume of standardized products the outer body will be there as a modular component and it will be combined in an assembly unit will be you know producing a high volume of uh, products in that particular company and the characteristics of a business environment and need for uh, agility is uh, medium levels of uh, dynamism and diversity and high level because the company own this type of uh, area where it is an, uh, uh, keeping an eye on growing need for an agility and uh, limited by the demands of uh, productivity all the pro because uh, the productivity is limited productivity is limited and the demand is comparatively higher where it starts you know the, because the industry itself is working on medium levels of dynamism and diversity because of that the it is uh, producing and high volumes of various standardized products all the standardized products it's producing because of that there is a growing need for this particular industry to uh, uh, shift uh, they, they themselves to agile and the organization structure is formally functional, formally functional. Once again, the organization structure it itself is a pyramid like uh, structure where you will have a lower bottom level of a flow line and then the middle level of management, then upper level of management. This is how the structural changes the R&D people will be sitting on the top. And, uh, the manufacturing objectives and competitors, main objective is quality, no doubt and the costs and the service need for improving delivery and flexibility there should be you know the uh, rate of uh, delivery should be more growing importance of natural environmental production because it's in car manufacturing productivity you should have an uh, you know uh, environment uh, production method so that ours is a low pollutant vehicle so that it's not going to create much higher uh, damage to that then basis and principles of this particular production is standardization of activities and processes the even the agile should have some standard processes and activities in that and they have incorporated the total quality management and uh, continuous in, in improvement in the system and the importance of human uh, capital intensive stocking systems all these things all these basic uh, um, basis and principles of these particular fellows uh, will uh, focus on only on lean but not on agile they have made a shift to that particular agile so that uh, uh, these principles, keeping these principles into that, uh, will furthermore uh, have an increase in that particular agile manufacturing. Another case study is because their principles and their, they have they have started producing only standard products and with the customized options based on modular components. You cannot have because it's a car manufacturing company. You cannot have any drastic changes into that. There will be only minor changes into that because of that they work on the medium levels. They are not completely agile, but they looks like they have implemented the agile, but they are not. They, there is a growing need for this particular industry to sustain much longer, to have an, uh, you know, shift to agile manufacturing than compared to. At present, uh, looking at the basis and principles of uh, production systems, they are working on the lean manufacturing. 
not on the agile manufacturing. There is a growing need for this particular industry to have an agile manufacturing. And the, the studies of agile practices, what the industry have uh, incorporated is uh, these human resources practices as uh, the principles of agile, the key elements of agile. They have started with the human resources practices here. Taylor is still designs of uh, jobs here. So simply the job it, description it itself, uh, this is how exactly the operator is. These are the qualities of that particular operator. Short operation cycles and specialization and high repetitions, high repetition of that particular jobs. And decentralization of decision making and reduction in professional categories. Number of professional categories will be very much less in this particular area. Then they have made any changes in this design and manufacturing uh, technologies. They have incorporated CAPs, AE, CAP. CAM and also the flexible manufacturing to incorporate this agile manufacturing. Because once we have entered into the flexible manufacturing, we can incorporate the agile practices. As and when there is a change in the production layout or the type, we can readily incorporate those systems into that particular paradigmic shift. Then finally, the administrative system and the technologies, what we have, here is an, uh, you know, the importance of uh, um, planning uh, systems and uh, MRP and uh, ERP, this are all uh, which will once again uh, go back to our uh, lean manufacturing or uh, just in time manufacturing systems where they have extended the use of uh, intranet and extranet and the EDI technology thereby they incorporated the practices of this particular agile into the administrative system there is a continuous flow of information within the system and within the technology so that they will be readily knowing what is happening in the shop floor of the particular industry and simultaneously the supply chain coordination and integration high physical and virtual integration of value chain and the physical proximity to key workers have been motivated by means of jeep and the high level of interdepartmental cooperation has been promoted so that these people uh, are you know uh, adding uh, that particular you know the cooperation between the uh, workers cooperation coordination between the workers so that the supply chain coordination can be easily done the knowledge and the information management system wide recognition of the need for a correct knowledge management system because it has developed its own uh, you know that uh, data on that and so that uh, they will be focusing on that particular area and also incorporated cooperation agreements and strategic alignments because they have entered into an agreement with the temporary alliances or the competitors as uh, the Azale is uh, uh, showing one key principle that it should have cooperation amongst the parallel competitors amongst the parallel competitors so that jointly they can uh, uh, take the market and they can uh, sustain in the market together okay and lastly organization of new product design and development virtual organizational structure should be changing with respect to the concurrent engineering concept so that they will not be you know sticking themselves to only one particular type of uh, component or the product which they are producing there should be a variation in the new product that will be launching not making much drastic changes to their own existing layout if uh, they want to, as and when there is a requirement, they want to continuously change their own layout means, then also it is not going to fit the required intended purpose. Yeah, there is an, another company called as 3M here, which is on uh, home care and health care products. Uh, this company sustained the age of this particular plant is around 45 years. And they have got very low number of workers and uh, low level because uh, the ratio of the workers is comparatively low and it has got very low level of trade union. And the type of production processes and flow line here, the volume is a medium size batch production. It's not even mass production, it's in batch production because it relates to home care. The uh, product to nature it itself is relating to home care and uh, the product here and it doesn't have any very low dynamism and high hostility and diversity the demands for product require greater agility it requires a greater agility to sustain much more in the market here the organization structure is market force market focused in order to have this what these people have done in this uh, they have incorporated the people are the key to the system of innovation 
they will uh, in, in involve the uh, people in that particular system and the innovation and they have set a wide set of uh, practices for increasing the training and motivation and the participation of uh, the employees and uh, they have incorporated few things as an uh, use of advanced design technologies like fms relatively low advanced manufacturing technologies plans to incorporate a greater automation in, in the existing layout whatever that is there and uh, the administrative systems uh, because uh, there is a much uh, smaller structure of uh, employees that is there they have implemented the six sigma methodology in that particular case and they have extended the use of uh, communication uh, technologies like in continuous flow lines within the shop floor to the supplies and and supply chain coordination and slowly they have incorporated knowledge information system thereby they could able to uh, uh, attain the asylum manufacturing but still still uh, it's not there still it's not there because not much higher deviation has been taken place in this particular industry then the john deere we all know what is a john deere company even though it's a, a company from spain it is an agricultural missionary manufacturing company where it manufactures the uh, axles, grades, and then transmission boxes and the uh, three point uh, connections. And uh, the lifespan look at the lifespan of this industry, it has gotten 500 years of industry. And uh, with the minimal number of workers, even though it has gotten sorry, not 550 years of industry, it has gone in minimal number of workers and then high trade union here. And here also, the flow line is not of a mass production, the flow line is of batch production with a cellular layout here. And all the products here is of medium size batch and we produce, they produce a wide variety of the products in this particular industry. And uh, it exhibits a medium uh, dynamism and uh, notable levels of hostility. The clean, clear need of facility is required because there is uh, no much higher improvement that is taking place in this particular industry. Okay, the organization structure is, it is mainly functional, although the factory level is notable as a customer oriented, but it is a functional industry and uh, it has got an organized structure from lower number of hierarchical levels. Just like a pyramid, they are all the industries, just like they are in pyramid, they are, you know, in uh, uh, acting in a functional area. That structure we need to break and we need to get it back to the agile practice. Then uh, the manufacturing objectives and the competitive priorities is uh, the quality, cost and the delivery of the product. Flexibility is becoming their basic aim here and uh, what they have, we we'll look into what they have incorporated in their own practices. They have adopted the teamwork and the renovation of shaft and increase in training uh, of workers to adopt the latest technologies and the motivation and power of workers such for versatility and flexibility of uh, repeated use of a temporary staff. Instead of having a permanent uh, this thing, uh, they have gone for an outsourcing where they can care, take the, as and when there is a requirement of that particular uh, staff members, they will be taking the services of that particular staff member. But uh, it won't uh, sustain the industry much longer if it is in uh, the large to larger extent. Then uh, the design and manufacturing technologies, they have incorporated the CAD, CNC, and uh, the flexible manufacturing systems. The administrative system evolution of MRP towards ERP, they have incorporated. And finally, they have extended their administrative setup to uh, the uh, internal flow line so that there will be a coordination of information, uh, co continuous supply of information uh, throughout the uh, uh, set up whatever that is available in that particular industry. Then lastly, the supply chain uh, coordination, what is there? There is a uh, high level of integration of uh, value supply chain technologies with respect to top, uh, customers. What is the need of uh, improvement? If there is any specific need of the customer, that need of improvement of uh, interdepartmental integration has also been done. And uh, some information, absence of suitable systems of knowledge-based management system, this is not available with this particular industry. And uh, scarce development at the factory level, yes, it's not because it's a fixed type of layout that is there. It works on the batch production. Uh, it, it has got a fixed production line. And on to that, you cannot have a much higher increase that they have to take and uh, implement in some kind of a strategic uh, agreement with any other uh, collateral person so that they can incorporate these 
because they have not aligned with any kind of an other parallel competitors in the industry and the organizer critical effect of simulation they have not you know uh, identified any kind of a new product routinely they are doing the things and they there is an emphasis on identifying a new product design layout for this particular industry and lastly an airbus airbus is uh, something like this uh, they have uh, they are manufacturing the aircraft components uh, mainly the tail of the particular aircraft components for over 75 years and a large number of workers in this particular industry and uh, the trade unions are much high in this particular but still it is a variable flow line and there won't be you know much uh, higher variation because of that type of the product look look at the type of the product what it is uh, Still, these industries also, this industry, this particular industry also have got a need of, uh, you know, um, having an uh, uh, agility. But still, the product it itself is restricting. The people are the key to the system for innovation. The work teams in uh, self uh, management ability, broadening the responsibility and discrimination. Already they have incorporated, but they have not incorporated the flexible manufacturing system in this particular case. And uh, they have also uh, adopted this MRP and ERP along with the uh, flow lines of uh, information flow through either uh, the intranet or extranet facilities, both internal and for the external. There will be a continuous flow of information from the external suppliers to and to the internal suppliers. Supply chain coordination, virtual integration of value chain, uh, uh, thanks to the new information coming, whatever the new software that is there, they have incorporated into that so that there will be in supply chain coordination and integration internally internally and that integration with the suppliers to the and the knowledge information system uh, there is no question of you know the tie up with strategic alliances strategic alliances they have still making an uh, entry into the strategic alliances in the design and manufacturing of uh, advanced industries and the new product development still because uh, the critical effect of simultaneous meaning, what can be done in that particular case, uh, if only in minute changes can be done in, in this particular type of a product that uh, the product based industry in this particular case, there cannot be much uh, drastic changes here. But uh, still, they want to have some ton amount of, there is a need for them to have an agility to sustain in the market uh, so that uh, they'll be uh, holding that particular stand for a few more years of a period of time. Thank you. And uh, any question and answer? Uh, well, Madam, uh, again, this is Jake Randy. I have one doubt. Uh, let me ask five yeah. then. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, no doubt the Agile manufacturing is a very good one and very important for the presentation scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, can I know, is there any software that exactly does this all this? Is uh, planning and scheduling uh, in terms of this, madam? Is there any software? Can you suggest anything for that? No, 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 no such software. It depends on the industrial requirement. They have to design their own, uh, you know, this thing, whatever the uh, um, um, production, whether the industry is having a production light, already whatever the um, uh, missionary that they are using with respect to that only no specific software that the agile manufacturing can incorporate in the particular industry that's the only reason why uh, we could not able to you know i am unable to cope up with the industry indian industries uh, as such uh, they have already started incorporating the certain amount of uh, agility practices but still they have made it as in uh, feedback we have made we have made implemented uh, these uh, agility practices and this is what the feedback that we have got but uh, in a uh, real life uh, application of uh, that particular uh, practice of agility uh, it's not a full-fledged uh, incorporation. Even uh, the industry which we have uh, here is in, uh, in uh, Tirupati, we have got few industries and even uh, the Maruti uh, company is also using a lean than compared to Agile. Because both the things are, uh, the people have got in confusion because overlapping both the things, 
both the things focuses on uh, the major areas much uh, not much of an uh, larger extent because agility tends to have a much higher deviation of whatever the market trends uh, if you look into the design of an any kind of an uh, car uh, uh, outside uh, structure of an body they will have in very minute changes in that particular even outside structure the structure will be one and the same maybe they might have lifted the dome they might have in uh, 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 slightly uh, well the edge of that particular car something like that but not a fun much higher drastic changes that is taking place but the present day scenario is uh, it, it the agility it itself will forces the industry to have in uh, much larger variation but the industry should also take care about uh, whether uh, they could able to incorporate all the changes and simultaneously they should also th they think about you know how to uh, cope up with the demands of the market and uh, uh, sustain in that and no no on uh, as of now this is the specific software that we want to use to my knowledge yeah okay madam thank you mm. and the next question is again from my madam from myself madam uh, uh, can you tell me what are the challenges that uh, Agile manufacturing is facing for uh, for today's world? Is there any challenges on that? Definitely, the challenges are there. One is uh, it is uh, thanks to the technology. It is uh, it ensure uh, it uh, just uh, uh, wants us to ensure us uh, to have a continuous flow line, and uh, uh, the industry is uh, shifted themselves to a flexible and uh, the uh, industry 4.0 present day scenario the industry 4.0 it has done drastic dramatic changes in the perspective of uh, the production lines but still uh, the challenge is here in the sense uh, you cannot have you know um, yeah you cannot have in uh, uh, continuous uh, strive and continuous change in the product every product will have certain period of uh, the agility will say there should be continuous change there should be continuous change in the product in in uh, oh, one arena and another case is uh, the agility has uh, made us to have an flexibility on the flexibility we have made uh, with respect to the industry 4.0 and looking at the organizational behavior right from this bottom up this bottom up has may uh, started some some kind of an uh, uh, drastic changes in the organization structure the people are used to have in uh, pyramid uh, type of an uh, top to down uh, bottom structure from the top to the lower level of bottom structure whereas it has to reorganize everything no doubt they have incorporated the flexible manufacturing they have incorporated the lean they have followed the industry 4.0 but still the flow line is top down that flow line we have to incorporate into bottom up that is in one uh, main uh, drawback of uh, you know using uh, this particular uh, agility which is uh, restricting ourselves to uh, move further with uh, the agile manufacturing yeah thank you madam uh, Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot, Ankitrana uh, Garu, for uh, giving me an opportunity for uh, you know uh, presenting, uh, sharing my knowledge in uh, uh, Srinidhi Institute of uh, Technology, Science and Technology. And I would like to uh, thank myself uh, for uh, uh, the University of uh, Ovida, Spain, uh, Dr. Daniel and uh, Lucia. And also, I would like to thank my scholar uh, and uh, Ram Prasad and uh, my another colleague, uh, Dr. N. Rajesh, uh, who has helped me in you know developing this presentation. Uh, thanks a lot for all the team, and uh, thanks to the Srinidhi Institute of Technology and uh, Dr. Jaikiran.